Hey everybody, welcome to the 8th lecture of Contemporary Math. Today we're talking about logical arguments. To start off with, it'll probably be helpful to know what an argument is, right? An argument really just comes down to two parts. The first part is a collection of statements. Each collection we call a premise in this context. And then the second part is a conclusion. To help us navigate our way through working out the logic of each argument, we oftentimes revert to a structure similar to what I've got behind me here. We write out line by line each premise, along with whatever symbol we're using to denote that premise with. So in this case, you'll see I've defaulted to uh, using P to represent a premise. So premise one is P1, premise two is P2, so forth and so on. And then, Using a line to separate conclusions from the premises, we write conclusions below that line. Excuse me. We oftentimes use this three dotted triangle representing therefore, along with whatever that notation for the conclusion is. So, again, here I'm using P as a symbol for my premises, and then Q for my conclusion. And this three dotted triangle just means therefore. So what this is literally kind of saying, not kind of, what this is literally saying is if P1 and P2 and on and on and on and on and whatever our last P is, right, then Q. We have a way of writing this using symbolic uh, uh, syllogy now, right? We can write it in this form down here. And using this form, we can now write out a truth table determined to determine the validity of each argument. So how about we do that? Let's look at an argument. So, in this first example, what we're going to do is work out the validity of the following argument. The argument is as follows. If I had anything more to do with the operation, I'd have to lie to the ambassador. I can't lie to the ambassador, therefore I can't have anything more to do with the operation. Okay, so to break this up and to start working with this, we first need to figure out what each of our individual statements are. I went ahead and done that. I decided to represent with P the statement, I have more to do with the operation. And with the letter Q, we're representing the statement, I have to lie to the ambassador. From here, I claim that the first premise is the statement, or is the compound statement rather, if I have more to do with the operation, then I have to lie to the ambassador. That's this first premise, right? If P, then Q. If P, then Q. The second premise, not Q, is I cannot lie to the ambassador. Okay. And then finally, the conclusion is, therefore, I cannot have more to do with the operation. Okay. So we've written it out now using, well, breaking it up a little bit from our premises and our conclusion using symbolic notation, right? So what we've got is premise one, premise two, and our conclusion. We're starting to write it in our, our symbolic notation. Well, we know that the entire argument takes the form premise one, P implies Q, and premise two, not Q, implies not P. So we can work this out now as the truth table. And you'll have to forgive me over here, I ran out of room, so I just went ahead and wrote implies not P down below. All right, cool. So, writing out this truth table, we started off with P and Q using our traditional uh, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false kind of structure, right? Determined that P implies Q is true, false, true, true. Not Q, false, true, false, true. And then both of our premises together. So 
premise one and premise two is false, 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 true. And the entire argument comes out to be true, 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 true. All right, how are we gonna use this? What does this tell us about our argument? Well, we say an argument is valid if and only if, I shouldn't say it that way. We say that our argument is valid when the conclusion is true whenever our premises are true. If that's the case, then this implication should always come out to be true. So in our first example, the argument is correct. It is a valid argument. Having said that, I should point out, whenever you see in a truth table an entire column come out to be true, like what we've got here, that means the logic statement that it represents is, a, is what's called a tautology. Um, a common example of tautologies would be something like all boys will be boys. As obnoxious as that is, it's always true. Anytime you have a boy, it will in fact be a boy. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next example. You'll notice with this second example, instead of using a concrete argument, I'm using just the structure of an argument. So we're saying that we have two particular statements, P and Q, whatever those statements are. And the first premise of the argument is P implies Q. The second premise of the argument is just Q. And the conclusion of the argument is therefore P. All right, so again, this is just the structure of an argument. We want to conclude whether or not this structure leads to a valid argument or not. So we go ahead and write it out as a uh, uh, truth table. We go through and we find each of the individual truth values given each case. We come down to the end looking at the entire argument. We find the truth values are true, true, false, true. Notice that this isn't a tautology. Because this isn't a tautology, the argument's not valid. That doesn't mean there aren't cases where the argument could be right. What it means is, in the eyes of logic, the argument is not a valid argument. Because it doesn't always work. It only works sometimes. So, the trick here is understanding that what we've got is really premise one and premise two. When both premise one and premise two are true, our entire argument, our conclusion, should be true. So our conclusion in this case is P. Con uh, premise one, Premise two, conclusion. Premise one, premise two, conclusion. So forth and so on. And when both of our premises are true, our conclusion should be true. Excuse me. Notice we fail on this third case, right? Premise one is true, premise two is true, the conclusion is false. Coming down here and looking at the entire argument, Premise one and premise two implies the conclusion. The only time we fail to be true is in that same case. That's why this has to form a tautology. And that's why it's easier to just go ahead and put this through a truth table and say, all right, what does this look like? Does it give me always true? If so, cool, awesome. If not, I have to go through and compare each individual row. And that's tedious. Might as well just go ahead and find out if it forms a tautology. And having said that, that's all I've got for y'all. I take that back. That is not all I've got for y'all. Um, I'll be right back with more. Having said what I've said up to this point, I wanted to take a moment to point out a couple 
uh, valid arguments and a couple invalid arguments. Start off with, let's look at a couple valid arguments. We have the direct argument, the contrapositive, the disjunctive, and the transitive argument. The direct has the first premise being P implies Q, the second premise is P, and the conclusion is therefore Q. The contrapositive argument starts with premise one being P implies Q, premise two is not Q, and the conclusion is therefore not P. There are two disjunctive arguments, but they're really just each other reversed in some sense. Um, and it has premise one being P or Q, premise two is not P, therefore Q is the conclusion. And again, the other version just really swaps out not P with not Q, and the conclusion swaps, therefore Q is therefore P. And finally, the transitive. The transitive has P implies Q for its first premise. The second premise is Q implies R. And the conclusion states one of two things. Either you can say P implies R, or you can say not R implies not P. So, having gone through a couple of valid, let's look at a couple of the invalid. Now, finally, as promised, a couple examples of common invalid arguments. Start off with, we have the fallacy of the converse, which has the first premise being P implies Q, the second premise is Q, and the conclusion is therefore P. The fallacy of the inverse has for its first premise P implies Q, for its second premise not P, for its conclusion, therefore not Q. The misuse of the uh, disjunctive has P or Q for its, its first premise, for its second premise P, for its conclusion, therefore not Q. Or you could have for the first premise again P or Q, for the second premise, Q, for the conclusion, therefore not P. And finally, for the misuse of the transitive, P implies Q is the first uh, uh, premise. The second premise is Q implies R. And what differs here is our conclusions. You could have the conclusion, therefore R implies P, or you could have the conclusion Therefore, not P implies not R. Again, these are invalid arguments. These aren't valid arguments in any way, shape, or form. Having said that, you might have noticed with these first two, it called these the fallacy of. This, everything we just talked about, is where logical fallacies come from. This is quite literally Whenever you've taken an English course, they're like, oh, that's a logical fallacy. This is how we know they're logical fallacies. We're not saying that the argument can't be right. There are times where logical fallacies certainly are right. Well, some are, anyhow. What we're saying is, in a logic sense, they're not valid arguments. They're not valid because they're not always right. So you have to be careful to use them. And having said that, really, I will let y'all go. I don't have anything else to tell y'all today. Have a good one.